Well, hello there, DIY music followers. We got something pretty exciting happening today. This is a video, as you may have guessed by reading the title, about taking a cheap guitar and making it awesome. And what do we need to do that? All my friends at 920D Customs have hooked us up, so we're about to find out. All right, so this has been in the works for a while. Uh, Got delayed for a while by a series of unfortunate events that included uh, me separating from my wife, uh, my having to quarantine due to potential COVID exposure from buying a car, um, and then I'm trying to buy a house for myself, and I'm living in an Airbnb, and have been busy with actual work. So, anyways, it's Saturday, and uh, we're here, and we're ready to do this thing finally. So. This is a BC Stratocaster. Got it for 50 bucks off of Facebook Marketplace. You can pretty much always find these things. Uh, Johnson brand, BC brand, I guess it varies uh, by where you are, but yeah, you're not gonna pay more than $50 for just a cheap, basic Stratocaster. So, what do we need to do to this thing? Welp, there are some things that you're probably gonna wanna do, like adjusting the truss rod and tweaking the action and stuff that can make a huge difference in the playability of the guitar. Now this one, the fret ends are nice and smooth. If you, if you pinch your fingers on the sides of the fretboard and slide them up and down like that, and it like cuts your fingers up, then you're gonna want to file those ends down so that, that doesn't happen. But this one does not have that problem. And this is green, by the way, I don't know if that shows up on the video. It's a very, very dark green burst. It doesn't matter to me. Um, especially because, in my opinion, darker bursts like this uh, tend to look really, really good, not with white pick guards, but with black pick guards. And why, why might I be saying that? Well, it just so happens that my friends at 920D Customs, who are not paying me to make this video, but who saw fit to send me this. So let's open this thing up. I've been putting off opening this until I could do it on camera. Very exciting. This, you know how you get a box sometimes and you feel like, oh, this was packed with love? You can feel the quality? Yes, that is what this box is. There's a wiring diagram. You can see there's a, there's a lot going on there. All right, so. The reason that this happened is because 920D Customs just started working with a company called Fiesta Pickups. And Fiesta Pickups makes some really nice stuff. But what you see here is kind of like their flagship new special thing. So as you can see, first off, it's a black pick guard. So that's gonna look freaking great against our dark green burst. But secondly, you can see each one of these three pickups here is a mini humbucker. Well, what does that do for us? Well, I'm glad you asked. Per this diagram here and uh, the description on the website, which I will show now, they have what is called a seven way switching setup here. What I asked for, typ typically strats have a volume and two tones, but a, I don't really use the tone knob pretty much ever. And B, it's always weird because sometimes you don't have a tone control on the bridge. Sometimes it's one of them controls the neck and one controls the middle and bridge. It's just a strange thing. Um, so what I asked for was master volume, master tone, and a kill switch, which they happily provided. Oh, it feels good. Yes, 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 yes. It's nice and smooth. Um, I did ask for chrome on black for everything, so I understand why they put this chrome switch tip on here, but yeah, I'm gonna switch that for a black one, but all good. But, whoa, look at this. Dang. Okay, so yeah, they got even their, their new custom, like four point output jack thingy. All right, so what what is a loaded pick guard? Well, a loaded pick guard is what you see here. It is 
all of the electronics of the guitar. Boom, done. Pre-wired for you, all beautifully soldered. This is a nice quality five-way switch, big full-size pots. Um, so, basically, if you get a loaded pit guard, all you have to do is pull out the old one, drop this sucker in, and you're done. It's a complete and total electronics replacement. So as you can see, there's two mini toggle switches here. Kill switch, master volume, master tone, and then five way. So yeah, 920D custom uh, hooked us up. So what are we gonna do? Well, first we're gonna get some sound samples, playing samples with the original pickups. And then we're gonna drop this bad boy into here. And I'll show you exactly what it takes to do that. And then we will see what kind of monster we hath wrought. Let's do it. All right, so we'll take our 920D custom pick here. Let's just see how this thing sounds acoustically. So this didn't come with a trem bar, but I'm pretty sure this is gonna be the same uh, six millimeter style that Squire Strats take, so. I can get that off eBay for like $2, no big deal. Acoustically sounds good. Action is definitely high. Um, so to inspect that, you, I find it easiest to just go to, from the tail and look forward. So there's two different things going on, which is that it is just genuinely very high uh, at the at the rear of the instrument, aka these saddles, um, using these tiny little Allen key screws, they're just they're just too high up. Um, so that's problem one. Then problem two is the neck has an apparent uh, curve to it, so it's very high. It's very high up at the nut, and then it dips down and it comes back up a little bit by the by the end of the fretboard. So it kind of has that kind of shape. So if a neck has that kind of shape, that's called relief. And so this neck appears to have too much relief. And the way you fix that is this little hole up here, you stick in an Allen key that is the right size and you tighten it. And when you tighten the truss rod, which is a, an adjustable metal rod that's inside the neck of the guitar. When you tighten it, it removes relief. And it will take that curve and it will flatten it out more and more the more you tighten it. If you tighten it too much, it actually can become uh, convex and be curving like that. But <laughs> if it's like that, you're, you're gonna know pretty quick because the strings will be sitting against the frets and it won't be playable anymore. So. Most people like to have a little bit of relief in that neck. I prefer it pretty flat. Um, so we will just try to get those couple issues with playability sorted out. Um, Cause we're gonna keep the strings that are on here cause they sound fine. Uh, so we'll get the playability issue sorted out and then we'll slack the strings completely and start taking this pit guard off uh, to replace it with this bad boy. So like I mentioned, I'm currently quarantined away from my house because of potential COVID exposure. So I don't have all of the stuff that I usually have access to, including the you know tons and tons of Allen keys I have of varying sizes, but I got this uh, pack of the uh, keys to adjust uh, a first act. <clears throat> so let's go for the biggest one and see if that fits in this truss rod hole. Yeah, seems to, uh, so I pushed it all the way down in there. It doesn't seem like it wants to turn uh, by putting just a little bit of force on it. So I guess we're good to go. Um, so I'm going to loosen the two inside strings, the D and G strings, just to uh, give the truss rod <laughs> Allen key a little bit of breathing room to work, like you see there. Uh, and that way, I won't be apt to potentially break my strings 
All right, so righty tighty, lefty loosey, people. Gotta, gotta learn that, gotta always remember it. So that means to tighten it from your point of view is that way, that is tightening. So if I look at it, yes, if you look at it from your point of view, that is indeed to the right or in a clockwise motion. Let's look at the relief. Still too much for me. Let's look at it again. And you just wanna take this slowly and check it um, every turn or every couple turns. Now, sometimes necks can have broken truss rods or the tightening cap can come off. There's lots of bad things that can happen to them. So if you, uh, if you really care, if you're buying a more expensive instrument, it's often a pretty good idea to uh, check and determine if that is busted before you buy it. In this case, I did not care a little, even a little. All right, this is getting pretty close. Um, yeah, I can feel it snugging up as it tightens. And yeah, that's, that's looking pretty good now. And oddly enough, by doing that, it looks like the, the height uh, of these saddles uh, now looks apparently a lot lower. So we might not even need to change them now that we've adjusted the truss rod. Since I had that really big bow, I knew that was my primary culprit in the action being messed up and too high. So just popping these strings back in under the string tree here that they were both on. Yep. All right, so now we just need to tune those back up to pitch. Well, that, that feels very nice in fact. Very nice indeed. Well, that's uh, that's good enough for me for now. It, it feels pretty good. Uh, I definitely will probably lower the uh, at least the high E string side a little bit. Um, you know, some of this depends on playing style. I, uh, I tend to play pretty hard. I tend to strum really hard. Uh, so I like to leave my, my lower strings higher up off the board, especially since you're not you know, soloing there. But once you get up into here, you can feel there's a lot of action that it takes to get that string down to the fret. So I will, I will lower the, that, the treble side like to kind of grade the last three strings lower than they are now. Um, usually I'll take it down just until it feels good and then check, go up and down the neck, checking all the notes, making sure that they're not choking out from the action being too low. Um, but uh, I don't actually have the right uh, Allen key. I don't have small enough ones to do that right now. So I'm just gonna play chordal stuff for the time being and call that good enough. So on to the preliminary uh, sound test, and then we will come back after we put in this new loaded pick guard, and we will uh, listen to the A-B comparison of the two of them.
So. Oh, we've <sighs> demoed the sound, the built-in pickups. It's time to start taking things apart. So, so step one, slack all your strings. I like to hit them while I'm doing it so I can hear for sure that the pitch is going down. Because if not, you might be turning it the wrong way and that could break a string. You don't want that. We want these nice and floppy. Make it easier to get the pick guard out. So basically, I want to do it until there's not really any tone left. It's just going And as you loosen some, others will get tighter again. That's the nature of the tension of the neck going down. All right, so that's pretty floppy. That's good. All right, so there are two things that we are going to have to unscrew. The first is the perimeter screws around the pick guard and the number of these and their placement varies based on what kind of strat you're doing this to and what kind of pick guard they chose to use. There are lots of different numbers of holes of strat pick guards, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, uh, 11 is how many we have. Ones you don't want to take off are these two here on either side of the five-way switch. That is keeping the five-way switch in. And then these two on either side of the pickups because those are holding the pickups in. So you don't need to undo any of those. You just got to do the 11 around the outside perimeter. So get to it. Don't lose your screws. If you try to take it off like I just did and that thing's moving, you probably missed one. And yep, I did. I missed one. There we go. Now I can feel the whole thing is mobile. So I'm just going to try to sort of rotate it from back here at the output jack because it's still connected back there. I'll show you that in a second. All right. So here's where the complication comes in. If you look carefully, you will see that there are two wires coming from here, going through a hole, and then there's one wire coming from here. Now this is the ground wire from the trem spring claw on the back of the guitar. And that grounds the strings so that they don't pick up radio frequencies and stuff. Um, so we need to keep that one. Now these two coming from the output jack we, uh, we, have a new, we have a new output jack, so we don't need to keep that. However, they do go through a very small hole, and well, that output jack is not gonna go through that small hole. So, what it looks like we're dealing with is we are going to have to desolder and then resolder three points. The ground wire from the trem claw and then the output jack wires. Where we choose to do that uh, can vary because each has a solder connection at either end. But here's what I think is gonna be the easiest thing to do. <clears throat> and, uh, and actually the only thing that I can do because I don't have any solder that is currently still uh, at the house I am quarantined away from. So. What we're gonna do is, I have my soldering iron though, so what we're gonna do is we're going to desolder this point where the trim claw ground wire connects, and we're going to remove it, and then we will resolder that onto one of the backs of one of the pots of the new pick guard. And the output jack, well, let's unscrew the output jack and I'll show you what's going on there. So the output jack, just has these two wires soldered on there that are keeping us from getting that out. 
And similarly here on the new one, these wires, though cloth braided and very different feeling, still have, it's the same thing. There's two solder points. So we're going to unsolder both of these and we're going to do the same thing on here. We're going to unsolder both of those and that way we can get the, the, uh, the football jack plate out of here because uh, we're going to have to, we're going to have to put this jack in this plate and cross your fingers that the sizes of the holes match because sometimes I've had to drill out those holes bigger when you put in a different uh, jack in these kind of plates and I don't have the tools to do that right now. So let's hope. So while we're waiting for the soldering iron to heat up, let's look at this jack. Um, so like I said, sometimes these things don't actually fit. Um, like better jacks will sometimes have a like a wider diameter uh, threaded neck, and that means you have to drill out the hole in this output boat style jack plate. All we got to do to desolder this, just pulling the wires through to get easier access here. All you got to do is press onto the solder blob. Press down and then pull. Okay, so now that we've desoldered the wires from the output jack, we can just pull them out. And now the only thing holding this whole pick guard assembly to the body is that single ground wire that comes from the rear trem claw. So let's desolder that now. There we go. Jumped right off. There's the card talking about their new output jack. Apparently it's much more durable. That's cool. I've been upgraded. All right, did some digging around in my car's emergency kit and uh, found a 12 millimeter socket, which seems to be the correct one here. So I don't know if 12 millimeter will be what yours is, but I believe that usually uh, import stuff is all the same. So if you buy a cheap guitar um, like this one, then 12 millimeter may be what it is. So anyways, it's got a washer and a nut. So I'm gonna put those back on so that we don't lose them so that we can reuse this jack in the future if I need to for whatever reason. And now our boat is free. So if we unscrew this guy. Now we have to see if it fits or not. Gonna go with probably not. Hey, it does! <laughs> nice. Uh, so nice when that happens sometimes. Okay, so. I'm gonna tighten it down, reverse my ratcheting on that guy. Now, the jack fits, but the, the nut's a different size. So, 13, it's one millimeter bigger, 13 mil. So there we go, so it's tightened in. And now I can tell you the uh, unfortunate thing, which is that we still have to desolder the cables that are attached here in order to get it through the tiny uh, tunnel that goes between the output jack um, route and the main route. If you were on a Telecaster or something, you wouldn't have that issue, but because Stratocasters have the separate output jack um, style and it has a tunnel between them, then we're gonna have to desolder those to connect it. All right, so before we go desoldering these wires, um, depending upon the type of output jack, sometimes it can be really confusing uh, which ones are the ones that you need to connect to. So 
uh, I'm gonna do something real quick, which is I'm gonna look at it, and this style of output jack, it's very obvious which t are the two that you're supposed to solder to, and there's going to be solder there will likely be solder still on the contacts that were connected. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mark one of them so that I know which one is supposed to be the white. I like to, uh, when doing electronics, keep uh, everything, if it can't be the same color, then related colors. So white and black are much more common than white and red. So I'm gonna put a black dot right there on that one so that I know when we go to reconnect it, that that's where the white lead is supposed to connect, and the other one will be the red. So let's desolder this. There we go. All right, so first things first, we need the ground wire to be uh, connected to one of the grounds on this thing. So you can see there are three of them right there in a row, so we can just connect it to any of those. All right, well, that's not great, but uh, as a demonstration, just understand you should melt it more than that. And um, if I didn't have a junky old soldering iron and no additional solder, then that would not be that hard to do. All right, so now we just need to feed the output jack wires through the, uh, the same hole that the old ones came out of. It's gonna go through that tunnel over to the other side. Now these wires are a bit thicker because they're like a cloth. So just had to twist them together a bit. There we go. No problem those through just fine. So now we just need to do the same thing, make these connections by remelting the solder. All right, so now looking at the, where I put that Sharpie mark so that I know which one is supposed to go where. So it's kind of tricky to get wires to go where you want them to. That's why there's these electronic stations that they often call helping hands that um, you can get kind of like hold components where you want them to go. Um, that can be helpful doing this kind of thing. Finally got it to melt enough that, uh, that it connected. So I'll pull this down so that all the cable is, uh, is that way. Now let's re-screw in the output jack plate. All right, two screws for the output jack plate. One and two. Now everything's already all connected, so we just need to get this bad boy flipped around, slid under these Loosen strings. You may find at this point that you need to loosen them more. That's what I'm finding. The highest two especially tend to uh, not be as loose as you think. And uh, you no. Know, with this guitar, there is an important note, which is that it has to go under um, the edge of this fretboard. So I kind of have to pull everything up, slide it back so I can get that under there. Yep, that worked. All right, and now, see how everything aligns. This is the point at which when you're dropping in a new pick guard, uh, you start seeing the actual problems and this is no different. So as you can see, everything looks like it's lining up pretty good, but then back here at the bridge, 
we have an issue where it's not far enough forward to clear the edge of the tremolo uh, plate, the bridge plate. So if you look at some of the individual screws, like this guy here, you can see that the screw hole is further forward and the hole in the pit guard is, is too far back this way. So that agrees with this bridge in that it is telling us that it's too far back this way. So what that means is that what we really need to do is take some material off the inside of the, the back inside of the neck pocket uh, on the pit guard. If we cut that material off um, along the back side, inside of that neck pocket, then everything will be able to slide forward and be where it's supposed to sit. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the tools with me right now to remove that material, um, which you could do with a rasp or a um, sandpaper, rough, really coarse sandpaper or a file. Um, any of those things would work, but I don't have any of those things with me right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just, I put in one screw here that actually lined up at the bottom corner. And I think I will be able to demo this guitar um, as is to a degree sufficient for this video. And I'll just have to go back and fix that when I get access to all my tools again. So we're gonna tune back up, and demo this bad boy. Didn't I tell you the black and dark green would look freaking sweet? It does. All right, let's see what this bad boy can do. As you can see, you can get a crap ton of different sounds out of this thing now. All I had to do was drop in this new loaded pit guard from 920D Custom. So, anyway, that's it for now. Talk to you later, DIY Music. Peace out.